Like I'm not motivated by money at all. Hello and welcome to another chatty video. I have to like change the format of these a little bit because um, I wanna kind of feel like I'm having a coffee with you guys and that we're just sitting and chatting and having a good conversation. So recently I asked you what would you like me to film and I received so many questions. Something motivational, motivational, how do you stay motivated, how not to procrastinate, procrastinate, how do you set goals, how to stay organized, blah blah blah, how you motivate yourself on achieving the goal, how you believe uh, in yourself, etc. So I decided to do that but I didn't really know how to structure this video and then I asked you okay along these lines and this kind of motivational topic ask me more questions and then i will respond to those so right now i'm gonna answer to all of your questions about like the right mindset when it comes to work to discipline to achieving what you want to achieve i really wanted to film this video now and children are playing outside because they finished school you know it's still warm and nice outside their parents let them go out and the children in the neighborhood love me because I'm always kind to them and I give them chocolate. So I could open the window and say like, guys, can you please stop playing? But I would feel so awful because I remember when I was a child how much I loved playing outside. So we are going to film this video. Children are going to be playing. It's just like we're having a coffee. You know, we're in a cafe. It's not super quiet. There's other things going on as well, but we're having this conversation. Okay, let's do this. There's a lot of questions first question is how to know what you want in life decisions risks passion i think it's much better when you don't know what you want in life at first at least until you're like 25 at least because first of all i had no idea what i wanted to do up until i was 14 at 14 you kind of have to decide in england um about your further education and then at 18 you have to decide what university you're gonna go to both of these instances i had no clue what i wanted to do and i just had to kind of choose something not knowing if that's gonna be the right decision luckily in today's day and age you really are not risking much if you get into the wrong university you get in the wrong university it's not the end of the world you just go with it study get another skill then after if you realize what you want to study you can still change your mind it's never too late if it wasn't late for me to get into fashion when i was 20 what two to start getting into fashion when i was 22 it's not gonna be late for you either to start anything when you're 22 and fashion is one of the most competitive industries in the world so as long as you have like passion for something it's never gonna be too late one other thing that i would like to mention is that what really helped me so much is the fact that i didn't know what i wanted so while i was at university i had so many different jobs i recently had to find all the paperwork for uh, my settlement in order to stay in the uk because uk is not going to be in the european union anymore and i found like hundreds of pay slips from all of these different jobs that i had and by the way i got like uh, approved to stay in england forever but anyway that's another story the point is that i had so many different jobs so at university i worked at the university as a student ambassador i worked in hollister i worked for nhs as an interviewer so i was like doing this is the worst job that i've ever done in my life i had to knock from door to door with this little htc device i would ask people these questions like how aware they were about like health risks and health things and it was so horrible but I learned something i learned how to go around like how to speak to rude people i learned how to speak to people of all ages i learned not to feel uncomfortable it's very uncomfortable knocking on people's doors like do i even have to point that out but basically like i was never like embarrassed of doing anything that's legal i was also like doing leaflets you know like on the street like leaflets when i was like really at the beginning of uni i did like few modeling jobs but like i mean who would want me as a model lol right then i worked at hollister and i loved that job and i got like a lot of pay rises there and promotions because i was accepted to do jobs that no one else wanted to do so again htc device which i now learned to use because i already had the nhs job no one wanted to do like the stock take so like when you have the stock and you have to count how many navy sweaters how many pink and you have imagine shelves like 
like 30 shelves you're constantly going up and down the ladder you're counting them you're folding them once you're done you find another one in another row and then you have to go back and no one wanted to do that job but whenever it would come i would always ask for it because it would mean a more hours which means more money and b i knew that my managers could see that i want to do job like even the ones that no one else wanted to do i would always ask to do it so that was giving me extra points and then i was getting promoted and promoted and promoted and eventually they offered me the like managerial position but i already became a pharmacist so i was like goodbye i also worked as, in a pharmacy as a summer placement student then as a pre-reg and then as a pharmacist so i started from the bottom now we're here not really but you know what i mean i just think get experience do the jobs because you will get different skills that you might not think you're they're required like my htc like using this little device while working for nhs helped me when i worked for hollister like weird right i know but still or you know like knocking on different people's doors helped me because i became so confident in speaking to strangers and like not finding like things awkward also being a pharmacist helped me because then I didn't find things awkward either because people would show me their body parts. I know. It's true. I know like in England pharmacy is completely different to anywhere else in the world, but in England you're almost like there one person in between doctor and the patient, so people often come to you and take you to that little consultation room, like we have a consultation area, they take off their clothes, they show you their boobs, like it happens, you know, and like after that you're just fine with anything how to stay constantly motivated while still having fun catching up with friends family and boyfriend time is not something you have time is a privilege so time you make you don't have time if you don't make time this is something like very important to understand you know how people say like oh i don't have time we all have equal amount of time and we all have a lot of things to do how do you put different amounts of time into different tasks is like up to you if you spend one hour procrastinating you could have been that one hour in the gym if you spend like one hour doing makeup sorry maybe you can do it in 15 minutes or like try and like you know what i mean like you just need to make time for everything how to constantly stay motivated is a very good question i read a very good book on motivation I'll insert the picture here if I find it. And it says that we are more motivated for things that we think that we have control of. So, for example, why am I not motivated to play lottery? Because I have zero control over it, like literally zero control. But if I knew that I had more control of, like if it was a test in like medicine knowledge, I would get my sister to do it. So what I'm trying to say is if it's something to do with how much control you have over it, I think then I'm much more motivated. And consequently, like for example, in school they tell you the more you study, the better grade you will get. So that motivates you to study more eventually. If they tell you no matter how much you study, you still get a horrible grade. So for example, when I was in high school, we had this one very horrible maths teacher. No matter, like later we had a very nice maths teacher that was a lady but in the first year we had this guy he was very very young new teacher uh, he only just graduated and he wanted to show that he is so powerful so he gave us like very difficult tests that no matter how much you studied you could never pass and it just didn't motivate me same thing would work you just have to prove yourself that the more you work you really will get better results and i have seen that with my work the more like meetings I schedule, the more jobs I get, the more I film and shoot, the better results I have. The more I get out there, the creative I get, the more creative I get, the more growth I get. Like my story gets bigger. I am not motivated by money. So that's one thing, like I'm not motivated by money at all. I am motivated solely by growth. So I realized what motivates me. And I'm not talking about number growth. I'm talking about my name growth. It's quite a difficult concept, I guess. But of course, we all have to make money. We all have to, you know, whatever. When I was at Hollister, for example, I would be taking more and more and more and more hours because I knew I would be getting more and more and more and more money. But for example, what motivates me right now is to build my name, to build reputation, to say no to bad jobs, to say yes to good jobs, to get better clients, to really, really be authentic, to stay true to myself and to just do what I love. And I know that by working hard on this, I will get that. I think like you just have to understand how does working more and doing things that you don't like 
relate to actually getting something you want like for example i don't know if you remember a few years ago i started going to the gym before that i never would go to the gym and i motivated myself by telling myself if you go to the gym you can watch youtube videos of your favorite youtubers you cannot watch youtube at home at all or netflix so my only time to actually watch youtube or netflix was to go to the gym so every day i went to the gym because i really like <laughs> watching i really couldn't watch it at home it was completely forbidden so you just have to find something because for example at the beginning you don't see you yourself getting fitter you don't see yourself like losing weight or whatever when you go to the gym for the first few months you, i couldn't see my muscles growing for the first three months i couldn't feel any benefits yet but that was my one way into like tricking myself to get motivated just find a way i keep switching computer on so it gives me a bit of more light i'm already bubbling so much and there's still so much to tell you what do you think were the main habits that led to success first of all i don't consider myself successful yet i think there's still so much more to go i recently found my old phone i need to recycle these okay because i'm very conscious i can't just throw them away but do you remember these like seriously I don't know so i found my old phones and i went through the messages i charged them it took a while i found conversations like with my friends like blah 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 where i'm saying like oh my god i got invited to my first ever like press event oh my god i'm doing this like can you imagine like i have a thousand followers on instagram i can't believe that this has happened and it just reminded me like what used to be considered a huge success for me back when I started it kind of grounded me a lot because I remembered yes that for me was a huge success at some point because first and foremost I am a pharmacist like I was school to become a pharmacist I have no fashion background except that I always loved fashion and that I come from family that both parents really love fashion even today other than that I never ever had any passion education so i kind of like reminded myself like i don't consider myself successful but i understand that it's been a journey and that i have achieved a lot from the zero i think the most important thing is being fine with the rejection rejection is going to happen it happens to me it happens to your favorite influencer you know like the biggest red carpet star like you've ever seen like angelina jolie or whoever rejection happens even to them it happens everywhere it happens to me it happens to every influencer like rejection is normal and not just influencer like to every celebrity or star or businessman you have to understand that you're not the only person that's going through rejection and you have to have grit you have to be resistant you have to have resilience it's an extremely important thing especially in a competitive industry you just have to understand like no one's god's gift we are all replaceable like tomorrow there can be a new tomorrow i'm sorry but it is what it is no one is irreplaceable so you just have to understand that you have to keep pushing you have to keep going and you need to stay true to yourself also you have to stay true to yourself but you cannot try to achieve different result by same techniques if you're constantly trying to achieve the same result but you're doing the same thing and it's not happening it's not happening because you need a different technique so you need to be like also analytical towards your work so i think that's the most important thing just being fine with rejection and not having a lot of ego when it comes to the industry because i know a lot of people that have a lot of ego i love them personally a lot they're my really really good friends and they're saying like i just want to give up because i'm getting disappointed or like i'm getting re rejected it's not personal it's not personal it's just not personal don't take it personal just look at it and say it's fine like it's a rejection remember how many times jk rowling got rejected when she wanted to get harry potter published and it was one of my favorites like i was waiting every summer for the new harry potter to come out so how to stay focused i want to do so many things but doing everything is like doing nothing exactly there's a very good book that you need to read it's called one thing i will again insert a picture here one thing you need to be focused only on one thing at a time decide what's the one thing so i don't know if you're an influencer what's the one thing you're going to be focused on on your youtube on your instagram writing a book getting a brand out there 
Are you going to be focused on getting 1 million followers or on just creating the best content there is on Instagram? What are you going to be focused on? If you're a singer, are you going to be known for the best voice, for the best music videos, for, you know, you just need to be focused on one thing. And if you are focused on that one thing, you will be distinguished and known for that one thing. So you just need to decide what the one thing you're going to be focused on. How do you define success? This is very easy for me. As long as you're happy in what you're doing, you're successful. If you are the most successful like race car driver, but you're unhappy about it, you're not successful. If you're number one tennis player of the world, but you're not happy about it, you're not successful. And if you're 10th, but you're very happy about it, you are successful. There's a very good picture about like three kids. One that won like first place is like very miserable and the one that won third place is like yay, like cheering. And it's so true because you know what? It's all about how you see things and who cares like if you have more, if you're miserable. How do you deal with the days when nothing works out, when stress level is very high? That was today for me. I had a lot of issues that I just couldn't deal with. It was pretty hard, but I pushed through. Obviously, I almost cried around 6 p.m. Now it's 7.48. I then realized like this is not like not me. I had a lot of things to deal, not at work, but also like privately. I just couldn't juggle it right and I have so many deadlines. So that kind of adds stress. But then I told myself, you know what? If I don't sleep one night, I don't sleep one night, but I just have to get everything done. And I always tell myself next year, this time, I will laugh about this. And I always think about that because there was one of my first ever Cannes Film Festival red carpets. I got two jobs on the same day and I wanted to do both of them. One was shooting for like a big editorial in a magazine and the other one was doing the red carpet. And I didn't know how to manage it. It was so stressful for me and I was getting in trouble with like magazine because I had to tell them, guys, I have red carpet, like I really need to walk red carpet. But they already like booked everything. So I was like, horrible feeling horrible i needed to like work everything out i was like offering to pay like i was like what am i like you know like the loss i was like what am i gonna do anyway we managed everything we managed to shoot and i managed to do red carpet but i stressed about it so much and <laughs> today that that like stress seems so pointless to stress about like why did i stress about that so much like i'm too responsible sometimes like if someone says meet you at two i'm there at two zero zero i take these things way too seriously and sometimes i need to tell myself girl next year this time it will all be funny how to start from nothing like no cash you just need to show that you're willing to work hard you need to show potential the motivation the grit the fact that you can make anything happen you need to show it if you're just meh then no cash is a problem because people with money can make things happen but they need people who are self-motivated who are hardworking, and who are really 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 willing to go for it so if you have no money it's not a problem but you have to be exceptional you need something you need one or the other i for example when it comes to work discipline is the most important thing for me i'm an extremely disciplined person i used to study back in uni in library whole night till 6 a.m when the library would be open 24 hours during the exam period time i don't care like if my university was so actually far from where i lived it would take me like 50 like almost an hour on a bus to university i would still go and study because i knew i had zero distractions i would be so disciplined there you need to find your discipline you need to practice your discipline like it's so easy once you are in the mood like in the mode you also need to have courage to cut out everything that is like not taking you to where you want to be so like the friends that are bad influence going out alcohol youtube facebook back in the day tv you have to cut it out if this is not bringing you closer to your goal you have to have courage to say no i'm not gonna do this anymore also like discipline and like just showing people that you work for that you are wow is something that i think is very important showing up at work early staying long hours staying longer hours when i start working with someone and they're like oh nine i start six i'm done and i don't want to hear about anything at six or five sure that's your right absolutely fine you're not fired for that but you're showing me that you're only doing the bare minimum and i'm not really interested in that kind of employee because i can see that they're not really interested in achieving a lot for example i have this like story where most of the people that work with me or for me can work from their home so that 
technically from their bed I have never in my life never called in sick at work so not in the pharmacy not in Hollister nowhere not in university I've never ever ever not showed up or called in sick never not once okay I have two rules so for me headache stomachache backache I get all of those and I work I'm a girl, so I know what period pain is. I have IBS, like a really bad IBS, and I still work through it. Like today I had a very bad bout of IBS since early morning. I worked whole day. No one knows except for my sister because once I bent down because I got like really sharp pain in the stomach when I, while I was making morning coffee. So I never call in sick. There's only two excuses that I take in from my employees. I have diarrhea or I'm vomiting, like projectile vomiting, because those are the only two excuses that are okay because you cannot leave the toilet everything else i do not take like i feel like mm, you're weak i'm so tough it's very tough to work for me and i'm very very tough in business like when i work i recently was at an event and i started feeling like extremely unwell to the point where I think I vlogged actually the day after it I mentioned it when I got home I couldn't get out of the car I couldn't move my legs I couldn't get up the stairs I was like crying crawling on the floor but I stayed at that event till the end I was in pain I was socializing I was like smiling and talking to people and I was in so much pain so basically what I'm trying to say is if you want to be successful if you want to be distinguished like distinguished as that you are like good at something you cannot really be weak and you cannot be average one more thing I did ballet when I was in elementary school and I'll never forget my teacher her name was Beba she was a professional ballet dancer and then she got injured to the point where she couldn't dance anymore but she still danced until officially she retired and so on and so on she used to tell us that she would dance in a ballet her feet would be bleeding so much and you still have to keep dancing and that's the same for every ballet dancer their feet are bleeding but they're still dancing you know they're not gonna say like ouch my foot hurts I need to stop this you know so that's my mindset that's my mindset show must go on that's basically my little piece of mind do you have days where you're not as motivated if yes what do you do as a pick-me-up I just remember a few moments that when I worked harder the harder I work the better results I achieved I remind myself tomorrow remember like the less you work the less results you get and I just have to like tell myself you know what like you just need to do this I get very like work makes me happy there was also a question it's in serbian but i think i can try and translate it how do you put up with like difficult moments and emotions before important moments so during vlogmas this year i mentioned it a few times i had a very very difficult time i just found out that someone in my family is ill and every day was like a huge thing going on a lot of hospital appointments a lot of like is it is it not tests further tests everyday phone calls and i was on the road I was every single day speaking to my sister, speaking to my mom, speaking to my dad, speaking to the whole family every single day. I was like crying at night but working at day and it was hard but when I was at work I didn't let it show. It was like I need to do this. I already I said yes to this and I'm gonna push through this because imagine how bad would it look if I just all of a sudden stopped and I said sorry guys like I'm not finishing vlogmas because of personal reasons. I mean it's not bad. We're all human and we all deal differently with it but I don't allow myself things like that so this is my way of dealing with things and I think it's absolutely fine to deal with personal issues uh, and personal problems and emotions a different way it's absolutely fine to cancel something if you cannot cope mentally with problems and you need to speak to somebody and you need to like deal with that and you need to speak openly about it it's absolutely fine but this is my way i just told myself i have i have to do this like this is my way and i know myself so well psychologically i know myself like emotionally and i just know how i deal with difficult moments how to make a difference and not be one more you are never one more you are never just one of thousands we are all different we're all unique every single person on this planet like i don't know what seven billion are we now has something special in them 
just make sure to find that one special thing and don't try to adapt to everybody else be different show difference yes i am a serbian girl in england that studied pharmacy working in fashion now why would i embarrass like be embarrassed you know like a lot of people are hiding their roots or hiding where they come from just to blend in don't blend in outline your differences show what's different about you because you every single one of you is special is unique has something different to offer just show that you're willing to go for it show that you want to do it so stop watching youtube now go and get that stuff done that you need to get done finish work and be very proud of yourself tomorrow morning when you get up so that's my two cents on this topic thank you so much for watching you guys i hope you like this video if you have any other questions leave the comments below bye